Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. And welcome to On the Clock with Aaron Green. You're tuned into 96.9 FM Guardian Radio, and it is my pleasure to be here with you on this Friday, the 11th of June, 2021. Now, I guess I am very excited because it's Culture Fridays, and that means the weekend is here, and I have plenty spilligating and gallivanting to do in my backyard, and plenty relaxing to do this weekend. Boy, having a steady job make you appreciate the weekends like churin. I remember when I was in high school and, 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 and in school and saying, I love the weekend. But it, what? Time off. Good morning to my guest co-host, Mr. Darwin Thompson. How are you? Good morning, Aaron. Thank you. It's so much for having me. Absolutely. So today is Culture Fridays, and we are going to delve into some culture talk with our special guest today who is returning, Ms. Ianthea smith Ferguson, but before we get into that segment of the show, I got some housekeeping to do, and I got some what's in the news to look at. So first things first, today's show is brought to you by the Department of Inland Revenue. And in this moment, let's pause for a financial minute. Did you know the new Public Procurement Act 2021 will help to promote efficiency in the use of public funds? improve transparency in procurement, and increase small business public procurement. This new law comes into effect September 1st, 2021. This financial minute has been brought to you by the Ministry of Finance. Well, good morning, good morning to everybody except for the young men that were procuring or attempting to procure coconuts in my neighborhood, my immediate neighborhood yesterday. My man, y'all are so lucky that I didn't catch y'all in my neighborhood. Not that like I, you know, I was going to engage in any uh, attack or, you know, not like I have any plan to combat y'all or anything. I was going to burst y'all with stale jokes till y'all run out my neighborhood. I was going to talk about you a little bad too, I could be honest. Because sometimes when you can't throw rocks, you can't throw words, right? But I would have attempted to shame you into not just leaving my neighborhood, but into digging a hole in the ground and burying yourself because you no longer fit to be with decent humans. There's a couple things going on here. First of all, I need you to know that People saw you. People saw you all over. Because we got cameras all over. Right? So don't feel like you're all just slipping and sliding in and out. People can see you. But I need you to know something. Some elderly people be around the place, they see you and they get frightened. They get scared to death. See y'all right, oh, we only here. I mean, we only teeth and coconut. We only taking coconut. Missy, all the coconut on the tree. But first of all, you missing the point. You breaching my privacy. You're coming into my property without asking. You don't stop and you don't even stop and knock on the door and ask if you could have some coconuts. Right? And if you could do that, what else you could come in my yard and take? What else are you gonna come in my yard and do? If you could do that, you can come in my yard and wait for me to come home, watching me. That's what you could do next. I know y'all feel like it's just a bit of coconut, right? It's just a cup of coconut, miss. The tree needs to be clean anyway, miss. But why, if, if, if that's the case, why you can't sit down with me and we work out an agreement for you to come and clean my tree regularly? 
and we figure out what the cost could be. How we gonna share the cost? Sometimes y'all is set yourselves up. It's like it's like y'all wrecking. It's like y'all are wreckers, right? You know, not the not the people who is towed the car. You know, you don't see them. You see more abandoned car than you see wreckers. But that's not the type of wrecking I mean. I mean that old good time wrecking. That old wrecking that brought the Bahamas out of extreme abject poverty at a time when that's the only thing we're supposed to experience. Like wrecking when you take the light out of the lighthouse or you move the light so you could trick the boat captain and the boat could run upon the rocks and then you could grab all the things and sell them, right? We just wrecking our own boat. We wrecking the boat that we are on currently. It's like you stand into the port and you look in to the bow and you saying the boy them on the bow, they don't know it's us taking all the wood from the bow and building luxury apartment on the port side. They don't know that. That's what y'all doing. I want to mention another word here, but I scared. I really scared. See, I want to talk about the mango mafia, but I scared if I talk about the mango mafia, I may not be able to buy another case of mango ever again. See, because that's how we operate in the Bahamas, right? Like when you try to have a conversation about something in an attempt to create a system so that something may, manage, may run or be managed properly, people just get upset because they like how it works. Anyway, there's a mango mafia out there. And I want the people who are buying up all the mango to know that if you can't sell half the mango you buy, then you hoarding hoard mangoes. If you have to end up processing, the majority, or even a third of the mangoes you buy, then you mango hoarding. And if you buying all the mango, why you ain't wholesaling mango? Why I gotta pay retail price when I trying to wholesale mango? And why you doing this to Bahamians? Selling them local mango, as if you are a high-end fancy resort that does have $25,000 a night suites. Why are you treating your own people like that? You reckon. You reckon this whole system. But here's the thing. You reckon an entire fruit industry. You feel like in the moment you're just practicing some capitalism and that's fair. Right? Ain't nobody could stop you by any means necessary. But you reckon generations. You're destroying the future, the potential of young little rosy brown and pearl skin little babies to roll up in the hairy mango and stain up all their clothes because it's just an abundance of mangoes everywhere? A average Bahamian can't afford to buy a mango coming in from the family island. We reckon it. We destroying it. But for what? For what? A couple dollars? But you can't capitalize on people. People can't be capital. You can't cannibalize your own people. You see, I don't mind being a pirate. I am, in fact, I enjoy. I, not that I enjoy it. I was raised very strict Christian household, so the guilt has hit me all the time when I try to be a pirate. But I think I would enjoy it if I could get past all that need to be moral and ethical and decent, right? And 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 humane and. Christian, like, if I could get past all of that, I think I'd be a great pirate. Yeah, but that's what we are, we pirates. But I'm begging us, I'm begging us to stop. I know we all in panic mode because sometimes we have more dollars and cents. But we are cannibalizing ourselves. And we cannibalize in the future, they ain't even come yet, and we eating it up. Barely know where to find a hairy mango tree now. And here's the thing, everybody, I don't want no hairy mango. Now, not everybody, because the real Bahamians, like that's the standard. What's the real Bahamian? We love hairy mango. The hairy mango is the best mango for flavor. Okay? The, the stone that the builder refused, that mango, that's the best one for flavor. People, people don't even want to keep them in their yards anymore. Anyway. We got to stop wrecking the thing. I got a text here. Good morning, Miss Green. I absolutely love your show. Can you spell churin for me, please? Need to share with my grandchildren. Love you. Have a great weekend. Thank you very much. Churin is C-H-I-R-R-E-N. 
I am now including it in the standard Bahamian English. But what we, we have cheerings, not cheering here. Now, thank you, Texter. On another note, in today's paper, since we talk in culture, I want to just touch on some political culture for a moment before we get going. In today's Guardian, I want to start at the Guardian, there's a headline on the top of the fold. On the right-hand side, Turnquest, Moultrie, clash over claim against quote-unquote atheist civil servant. Now, looking at both the Tribune and the Guardian article, they are filled with morsels to be interrogated. And unfortunately, this issue, this matter that arises here, needs to be interrogated. First of all, Mr. Speaker, I want to point to remarks that you made. The remarks I made with respect to the person that I addressed I thought about those remarks before I made them, and I stand by them. I don't see them as an attack on a civil servant. He expressed his beliefs publicly. I have issues with those beliefs because they are inconsistent with mine. I express my view with respect to those beliefs." End quotes. Let's start right there for a moment. Dear Mr. Speaker of the House, I'm not going to say with all due respect because I don't think you all understand what due respect means. Nobody cares about your opinion. You are the Speaker of the House. You are representative of the House of Parliament, and the representatives in the House are representatives of the people. None of this is about you. None of it. The people that support you don't support you because of your opinion. They support you because of the issue that you are attempting to address. We don't care about your personal opinion. And guess what? Now is the time for you to look to the left or the right and see where Frankie Campbell is because now I have the opportunity to say, Frankie Campbell, now is the right time to say that thing you said at the most inappropriate time. This is the six months where you should be minding other people's business. Pay attention to Frankie Campbell and not attention to civil servants and their religious beliefs. That don't have nothing to do with you. First of all, they're a civil servant. I'm going to go further on in the article. Speaker Moultrie then said, and your opinion cannot infringe on my rights. Your rights to what, sir? Your right to what? To run on inappropriately about things that don't matter to you? For you to disrespect the civil service? For you to put people in fear that they can't practice their religion? They can't practice their right to freedom of and from religion? that we surmise from the rights to freedom of expression, freedom of conscience, and freedom of association? What rights are you talking about, sir? And if you want to know who sent down the order that you all can't have two meats and you can't have no food, it was me. It was me. I tell Marlon Johnson to tell Peter Turnquest to tell Minnis that you all don't need no more food. Now, who you mad at? You mad at the little children who haven't had more than two meals a day since Dorian? You mad at the little children who's sleeping in car because their parents don't have the wherewithal to figure out how to get them steady housing? You, who you mad at? You mad at the people who told them water from the lovely new state-of-the-art hand pump you put up in Nassau Village? Wherever it is you're running? Because to be honest with you, we don't care anymore. What rights... What right do you think you have that allows you to attack a civil servant? They work for me. They don't work for you. And to attack him on the point of religion. Now look here, it is not because the Department of Inland Revenue is a sponsor of my show, you know. That's not why I have in this conversation now. It's because the man is a decent man and does not deserve to be attacked in this manner. And then you go down here and you say, I don't want to have to name anyone now. This is in reference to, this is a long quote, right? And he says, like you said, things that you may have done and many things that you would not have done may appear on social media, but we as honorable members in this place have got to maintain standard and ensure that we are not the initiators of some of the things we hear on social media. And then you go on to say, like you think, some people in the house where you work put these things in the media. 
And the quote, and I can quote you now. I don't want to have to name anyone, but believe me, I was on the verge of doing so on a number of occasions, but I don't believe that that would be in the best interest of this institution or the members who have been identified to me. So you think, though, that attacking Marlon Johnson, the acting financial secretary, a civil servant, is in the best interest of whom? Of whom? Is it with the, you know, the Christian song? Whose report shall I believe? On whose behalf are you speaking, sir? You ain't a snitch on these boy them in the House of Assembly, is what you're telling us, but you're going to attack this boy who waking for us and told, you that, and told you that maybe we don't have enough money to feed you all this lap? And I'm going to add, because I'm sure that they didn't include this in the note that I sent them. Tell these boy them they getting paid. And if they can't figure out how to, how to bring breakfast and lunch to work, then how are Bahamians whose mortgage and light bill have been the same for decades, how are they supposed to do it? How, how is the young child who has often no control over his own circumstances, is to leave high school, has to leave foster care, has to make his way in the world, and you sitting here mad because you ain't had no breakfast and no lunch on the government dime? And you ain't going to turn around in your feelings and attack civil servants? Let me tell you something I know about my country. You don't never attack civil servants. You know, Aaron, I, I, don't, I don't exactly know what's going on with uh, the Speaker of the House. But this behavior is extremely childish. Yes. Extremely. I mean, this is beyond childish. This is grade grade five or grade six, you make noise because the person next to you took your pencil kind of uh, argument, right? Right. And then to cry, oh, you're infringing on my rights. I can't, I can't say what I want to say. Sound like a Trump supporter. And then, you know, I just wanted to say, when even you, dear sir, I don't believe that you're a trained lawyer. I could be honest with you. At this point right here, you shouldn't tell people that anymore. Anyway, I did run on. Not long enough, mind you. But we are, don't have the time for that. So I'm going to get to some of these texts and this call on the line. The text says, you are discriminating against bald mangoes, Aaron. I am, I am not at all. They just don't taste as good. And then it goes on to say, is Marlon technically a civil servant? OK, like, I don't know if the papers were signed, right? Like, I don't know, because, you know, some people still waiting for the domes to be erected so they, they have some place to live during hurricane season so they could remain in the island that they live in so they could vote in that island because no measures have been, right? Like nothing has been created for them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe he's not one yet, but it doesn't matter because you wait for the government and you don't do that to people who wait for the government. Right. Another text, preach Aaron, preach my sister. Thank you very much, but not for long. Got a caller on the line. Caller, you on the clock. How you doing, Aaron? I am good, thank you. How you do? Awesome, awesome. Would you mind if I dis uh, uh, discuss something very briefly with you guys? Because I know you only have an hour. Um, and, and I got a guest coming I'm on. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I only have like a couple, 30 seconds. Listen, Chapter 3, Article 17, mm -hmm. uh, 17 2 says, Nothing contained in or done under the authority of any law shall be held to be inconsistent with the... Con with with or in contravention of this article, to the extent that the law in question authorizes the infliction of any description of punishment that was lawful in the Bahamas Islands immediately before the 10th of July, 1973. And that uh, uh, chapter 3, article 17.2, is, is speaking to article uh, one of that um, paragraph one of 17, which okay. says, no person shall be subject to torture or inhumane or degrading treatment or punishment. Mm -hmm. Now, I ask your, I beg your indulgence in that, and maybe we will talk about it another day. But I don't know if these foreign companies comprehend when they interfered with Amos Jr. Miller, fundamental rights of this Constitution, because I need HR, any HR, and all HR to know. The Constitution governs HR. 
okay? And the policies of these governments and their party policies trying to trump the Constitution is laughable in 2021. And it's going to cost our country men and women pay daily financially for it, okay, as a nation. But individually, we are, when our rights, no one should be tortured. You train a man when you tell a man, here's a license, go to work, but you know it. There's a foreign entity waiting to discriminate, contravene. That's chaos. Thank you, Amos. Thank you very much. I could be honest with you. I thought you were going to say that the way that the speaker was treating Malin, right, was degrading, because I think it is. But the similar things, eh? And you're right. But here's what the problem is. The problem is that the Constitution like, says this thing. It says, look... These by them going to create laws, right? And every law they create is, going, is deemed to be in line with the Constitution until you prove that it is not in line with the Constitution, right? And that means that the legislators, the House of Assembly, like they have an advantage. So when we find laws that we feel are discriminatory or inconsistent, then we have to go, first we have to go into that same chapter three you're talking about and determine whether the state is allowed to permit, I mean, sorry, to, is allowed or permitted to discriminate in this nature, mm -hmm. right? And then secondly, you then determine, once, you, you know, once you've determined that they're not allowed to discriminate in that nature, then you bring the piece of legislation before the court and you say, we want, we want you to, I think it's either a judicial review or we want you to strike this law down as bad law because it indeed contradicts the Constitution or the intent of something in the Constitution. And so I feel in you, Amos, I, I agree. Everything human resources management need is right there in the Constitution, but it's up to us, the civil society, the citizen, to organize ourselves and put our resources where they are needed, where they are necessary, and build the mechanisms. We should already have a private sector legal mechanism to be reviewing laws and to help provide oversight in the absence of engagement from the bar association. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder what, what is up with, did the, listen, when the government put in the protocols that no bars were supposed to be open, they didn't mean the bar association, you know. That wasn't for y'all. We expect y'all judicial community, judiciary, right? We expect you to engage the public with information why are you not helping the average Bahamian discern what these laws mean? That means figure it out, right? Why you ain't helping that? If you see the social media, if you see the responses to the Shantytown ruling, right. it becomes obvious right away that people have no idea what they're talking about. They don't understand the law at all. But they, they declare in the, some of the most heinous things based on their misunderstanding of the law. And we have to be very, very careful of that, people. Dear Mr. Moultrie, we are finished for today, but not for forever. Kermit, let's go to a break. And guys, when we get back from this break, I'm bringing on my guest, Ms. Ianthea Smith-Ferguson, and we're going to continue our conversation on creatives and media in social media influencers and digital media in the 21st century. We'll be right back. Yes! Come on, come on. In life, there are always challenges. Today, we find ourselves having to be more self-sufficient, socially aware, and technically savvy. At JS Johnson, we are committed to our customers by providing cost-effective insurance solutions. No matter what your insurance needs, we will always be here for you. Call 397-2100 or visit jsjohnson.com. J.S. Johnson Insurance Agents and Brokers, giving you peace of mind. I've been representing all my life. I'm getting ready to make it count this time. Since 2021 for your family line. You better get ready. It's about that time. So tell mama to be ready. Tell it to the whole family. Go out the top for one, two. The count depends on you. So tell to the go tell the Yes. Come on, come on. 
Good morning and welcome back to 96.9 FM. You are on the clock with Erin Green and I'm about to bring Ianthea Smith-Ferguson into the discussion. Before I do that, let me give you some information. Remember, we're streaming live audio and video on guardiantalkradio.com. You can listen, also listen in on TV on Cable Bahamas Channel 969 or download the Guardian Radio app for your Apple or Android smart devices and listen to our audio feed or watch us on our video feed right there on the Guardian Radio app. You can also text us on the Guardian Radio text line. That's 422-GR96, 422-4796, and that is powered by BTC. Standard text rates apply. You can call us at 323-6232, 325-4316, or 325-4259. Good morning, everyone, and good morning to my guest, Ms. Ianthea Smith-Ferguson. How are you? Good morning. Are you there? Are you on mute? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Good morning. Okay, perfect. How are Good you? Good morning. Thanks for having me again. Absolutely. Um, well, we, we, we barely got into the conversation, and I'm really excited about um, the new port development and the potential opportunities for young creatives, right? And young and not so young creatives. But before we get there, Ianthea, we have a problem. We have a, we have a, pro that? We have a problem. Crabs are not getting to Nassau fast enough. Right? Oh man, I heard. <laughs> I heard that they were, it was so slow, some crabs was on a plane and they break out their box, go into the cockpit and tell the pilot, listen, if you need some help flying this plane, we are here. Right? <laughs> How are we going to, like, what type of social media campaign can we put on to show family islanders that they need to step their crab game up? Like, we need to protect the wakers at the airport in Nassau from these, from these crabs <laughs> who, if they get loose, they get into all manner of madness. What type, what type oh, of... Boy. Go, I, go on. And you know, Father's Day coming up soon, so boy, I don't know, we can need these crabs. Listen, I think it's a conspiracy against fathers, <laughs> right? To keep the, the, the crab and rice <laughs> away from them. So father's time to I think it's them. I think it's them. Some of these daddies say they tired of crab. <laughs> Boy, listen, so this is a Scooby-Doo. It, it turns out the daddy is the one who's teeth in the crab. Okay. Oh, man. But, right, like, so what I thought about was with the, with the lockdowns in Andrus um, and the, the impact of a second uh, reduced crabbing season, right? What type of social media campaign could we run to support the people, the crabbing, the crabbers, the people who go crabbing, but also to keep the culture, the, the, to preserve the food culture, and to share it with new Baham, you know, new Bahamians and young Bahamians growing into their own belly? Like, what can we do to make sure that we don't lose our crab culture? Well, there are many ways that the government or either, you know, the individuals themselves who work in these industry can use social media to just bring awareness to their plights. I know a lot of times we use traditional mainstream media to, you know, tell these stories and to go on, you know, the big news station to just, you know, air our concerns. But social media is like a 24 hour engine machine. And so you can just use it to put videos up. You can show us in your crab pen, show us how you got no crab, show us how it's affecting your businesses. And, you know, using influencers 
or you can just do it yourself. Use the power of social media. Now, I heard the song you were playing as you were coming back to me, yes. about, you know, Facebook being the devil, but it's really not. You can actually use it to your advantage in so many ways to bring awareness to the things that are important to you, to bring light or shed light on the things that, you know, you think more people should know about. And so as opposed to just sitting down and waiting for someone to come to us and access our story, we have the power to use social media to go out there and just to start telling our story, telling what important to you telling you know what what do i want my my fellow bahamians to know about what do i want them to know about you know this thing that's affecting me and so you know just turn on your camera one day go on facebook don't use it for evil you know you don't have to use it to gossip or to bring someone down you could just use it to share your story absolutely what i like most about facebook is con watching the connections that people make through my page whether to other people or to information, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I don't talk to the vast majority of people that mm -hmm. are connected to me through my page uh, regularly, but I realize that th they, they come not necessarily to interact with me, but to interact with the information that, and the people that they may find on my page. And so I, I say to a lot of people, like, first of all, face, uh, these platforms are good for staying in touch with people. Right? Just, I know you right. there. Um, when your picture comes across my feed, it reminds me I got to keep you in my prayers. So I got to yeah. give you a call. We don't have to talk all the time. I see pictures from your children and I know everybody is good and, and that's sufficient, you know? But um, also, I use it right. in my right. business and, um, and I see young people are using it for business now, mm -hmm. right? Social media. So I wanted to talk about uh, transforming content consumers into content creators, but also because people are all focused on work, right? What are, like, I wanted to talk about some of the opportunities that can, may, or will arise from the new downtown port development. But I want to give you, an op I want to give you a moment to think about that because I got a caller on the clock. So let me let you think about which one of those you want to tackle first, and, and then I'll get to okay. the caller. Caller, you're on the clock. Well, I only got 30 seconds. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning to you too, boys. Let me tell you something. I is, I is, I is, I is admire you sometimes, and I listen to you talk in our Bahamian dialect because it really takes me back to us people being we people. Yeah. When I see foreigners from down in Trinidad and Barbados and Jamaica and Haiti, when they come here, they just keep their dialect, no matter whether they learn to speak proper English or what. Mm -hmm. But as once we jump in one damn book or something and go off to the United States or England, we come back so, so, so patique and so well spoken, like we some little white little funny little freaky person. We forget, and I like to hear when you say we gain something when they doing this. And this and that and the next. We used to get me come from Chumacala Corner and round Bain Town and Digilo. Because we get a little piece of education. That's why I admire you, ma'am, for keeping it Bahamian. And some of us Bahamian got to realize we don't have to be and sound like nobody else. We could be ourselves. But when we in the, in, the, in the proper place, we could use the Queen's language and this and that and the next. Mm -hmm. And another thing I would like to thank. This Bahamian radio station, Guardian 4, was bringing on Mr. Mark Alpine the other day because I admire a man so much. But finally, we have a man with testicular uh, personality that will stand up in House Assembly and tell his own party leader, his own party backbenchers, some of them who suck it up to the leader to get what they want for them, their friends, their families, and their, and their lovers. I congratulate Mr. Michael Pine. I congratulate um, Guardian Radio. And I think we got to start loving being Bahamian because this we things. Yeah. Have a good day. I love you. Thank you, Sparky. You this should see my yard, Miss Lady. Tomatoes, bananas, avocados, all kind of red peppers and things. And my yard only 50 feet, you know. That's and good. the house in the middle of the 50 feet. That's good because I can't run fast or far. Okay. Have a good one. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I suppose to talk about your agricultural thieveries, um, but I will not crack joke on you, on you, Sparky. I will not come in your yard and try to procure any of your fruit without talking to you face. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, this are, this are our things. And I, 
for me, it's a commitment to being Bahamian when I was raised in a space in, and in a place that is so not attached mm -hmm. to being Bahamian. But more importantly, it's a protest because my good Grammy Corinne Mitchell would not let us off the side porch on East Street opposite the police barracks, right? Like she wouldn't even let us go in the backyard. Yeah. And, and part of it was, I, you, your mother's children, I don't want you to pick up any habits that she don't want you to pick up, right? Like trying to be a good Grammy yeah. and, and, and support her daughter's style of parenting. Best, yeah. But yeah. I miss all the fun. I miss picking all the fruit. I didn't get to run up and down in the Fort Hill. I don't know none of the people business. I ain't learned none of the talks. I could only buy Cup in Johnson Road. Yeah. Shout out to Mama Co. Oh, yeah, that's the best. And the Justice Cup and the Justice Todd. Every piece is a corner, right? Like, that's the best. And so for me, appreciating and wanting to be Bahamian is not just a feeling. It's a journey and it's a practice, right? Right. It's a practice because English um, Bahamian dialect is all of our first language, mm -hmm. but it was taught out of me. I was socialized and raised to not speak dialect. Same. And so now I got a conscious, I consciously bring it back in mm -hmm. to my thing. Ayanthea, good morning. You still there? Ayanthea, you still there? Oh, I feel yeah, you're still here, Erin. Okay. Good, good. I, I feel bad I send you on, 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 on a break and you didn't come back. So, and, uh, and a part of this, right? Um, I want to say to young Bahamians, don't be afraid of Bahamian dialect in your content. Mm -hmm. How you mm -hmm. feel about that? Absolutely. I love it. It's actually what sets us apart and what, you know, make, what makes us us. Because we have millions and millions of content creators out there. And if everyone starts to sound the same, look the same, do the same thing, I mean, what's going to set us apart, right? I actually did an Instagram Live a couple of weeks ago. And I had a young lady um, who was in there with me who wants to be a content creator, a blogger. And she was like, you know, do you feel like being a Bahamian kind of limits your abilities and what you can do? I was like, oh, no, ma'am, it does not. I think being a Bahamian is actually what gives me the edge. You know, it sets me apart from everybody else out there. And so I was just encouraging her to not let her physical location deter her from, you know, wanting to achieve her goals because I'm a Bahamian. But I, as a content creator, got the opportunity not only to write for Essence Magazine, but also be featured in Essence Magazine. As a Bahamian writer, I was reached, somebody from Forbes Travel Guide reached out to me to write a story for them, you know. So my physical location has never been a hindrance to the goals and achievements that I want to achieve. And so I just, you know, want Bahamians to understand that there's space for you, there's a place for you. Once you stay true to yourself, you know, inject some of your culture into it because it's it's what sets you apart. Absolutely, yeah. You, hey, Anthea, this is Darnia. Uh -huh. I um, originally was going to ask a question similar to what you just gave a response to. So, um, for example, starting out in um, creating your own content, right? As um, myself, I'm a social media manager as well and content creator as well. Uh, I have significant trouble developing content on my own. So putting together video and, and, and giving my opinion and, and putting it out there, um, I don't know if it's maybe that I don't like to see myself on camera or hear myself speak, but what would you say to a person that mm -hmm. has those issues and, and how would you um, best uh, advise that person to get into doing this on their own? Well, I feel like the number one reason why a lot of us have problems with it is because first of all we don't believe in the story that we're telling right and you hear me can talk a lot about the story because it's really what content is just consistently building content videos posts or uh, photos around a specific story a lot of times you feel like hmm, nobody's going to be interested or i don't think this is going to connect with anybody so once you kind of once you kind of, you know, are confident with the story that you're telling, it gets a little bit easier. You have to first identify what story you want to tell. What is it that you want to share with your audience, right? For me, I absolutely hate the sound of my voice. <laughs> and so when I have to go back and edit my videos, I'm sitting there cringing. I'm like, okay. I don't want to put it out. 
I don't even want to do this anymore. But I kind of got over that hurdle, put it out anyway, and realized that, okay, it connected with someone. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of our downfalls or our pitfalls with content creation is kind of in the mind and not thinking that people are going to accept or receive what it is that we're going to put out. Once you get over that and you realize that people consistently respond to the work that you put out, you realize that, hey, I'm a content creator and I can do this consistently. Okay, okay. So, so making that first push is important. Helps. Yeah, I, yeah, but I think making that push, first, push first push is push, important. Yeah. And I, you know, I want to say I was sitting here thinking I have a I have a a, a project now, right? And I think because we're talking about the opportunities that may arise and will arise and should arise right. and can arise if we start organizing with the Newport Wharf downtown mm -hmm. development, right? Mm -hmm. I'd love to see a set of stations where as I'm walking, whether I'm doing my own walking little walk through town or I'm on a, a, a guided tour, a paid guided tour of some sort, mm -hmm. or a tip your town ambassador tour, mm -hmm. there's stations where I go to a building and I press a button and then a story is told. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And for, so that's one part of it. Mm -hmm. Now, where do we get the stories from? So I now want every Bahamian to see themselves as a content creator. A storyteller. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. And to choose a place where they from or where they are or where they is be and create a story. I would like the story to be real, like true, but I as a Bahamian don't have to be true <laughs> as evidenced by the newspapers. I'll accept any old <laughs> foolishness, right? But um, where, <laughs> where we are collecting the history and the stories that aren't collected by the formal mechanisms. Right? Like that's, and, and so, you, so when I hit, like there is the, the, the hub building, the, the building on, I think by Coldbrook and uh, Victoria that used to host the hub uh, uh, creative event, the music, poetry, Nadine Brown, mm -hmm. roots and culture, right? That space there, Track Road Theater was once in it. Mm -hmm. So imagine a station there where I could push a button, it's a historical, social or contemporary or urban, right? Like right. urban legend right. stories. Right. And we get all of these stories here because we're an oral society, mm -hmm. which means that we don't, we, we're not a society that practices writing our history down right. with pen and paper, right. right? So I want everybody to see themselves as a content creator. Um, and that's the idea I have mm -hmm. for the Newport development, right? I want the story stations and whether you're a tourist uh, or whether you're a domestic tourist, you're coming into Nassau, yeah. or whether you're a Bahamian, like, and you don't live in Nassau, you live in, in New Providence, South Beach, far, far away. Mm -hmm. You come to the center and you press a button and you could hear any story you want to hear. That's, that's a good idea. Right, I love that idea. Yeah. I love that idea, but I do think that, you know, the governments and either, even beyond the government, you know, private sector can use influences to their advantage in so many ways. I mean, just for one, I feel like once an influencer build an audience on their own, like that's an audience or a group of people who that company or that government probably didn't have direct contact to. So you can use influences to reach people, to humanize your products, humanize your entity, you know, and just kind of bring a lot more connectivity to it. I think a lot of times when we think about content creation, a lot of people are content creators and they don't even know it. Yeah. <laughs> they don't even know it. They think they're just on Facebook posting. I think they're just on Instagram posting, but they are curating content. Right. They're building an audience. They're engaging with an audience consistently. And so using content creators, even the ones who call themselves that, who don't call themselves that, you know, it's very beneficial, I think, to the government in so many ways on so many projects. So many campaigns they can tap into, like I say, different audiences from different age ranges, from different locations even. And, and listen, in the time of COVID, right, in the pandemic, one of my biggest complaints with government offices is when you come into the office, it is, it, it is presumed that you know everything you need to know to do what you've come there to do, right? You know the entire system. You know where all the documents could be found. And they leave us with a lack of information right? Just standing there feeling lost and like we're never going to get something achieved. I would love to see, especially since we need to create more no contact exchanges of information, right? No personal contact. Booths. Well, first of all, I'd like to see a big display board where 
all of the rules and all of the procedures and all the instructions are displayed in a regular rotation on that board, like in the fast food restaurants on the board. Um, but also, I'd like a booth where I could go in and put on a pair of headphones and I could ask a question, right? And it gives me que most frequently asked questions. And then it gives me an option to ask uh, or either automated voice or a real-time person a quick question in the booth so I could sort out my information, no actual contact with a person, and then I could get a better start on what it is I'm trying to do here. Mm, I like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping the government sees not just the potential, but the, the, the fact that they need content creators and creatives to help them fulfill their job. Perhaps even if um, the social media pages and handles used by these places were more efficiently or uh, strategically developed to include this information before you ever even leave your home, yeah. it makes it 10 times easier to just go on and find out what you have to do before you get in front of the We could just start servant. with the right. websites. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, Ayanthea, I, I have you yeah. in front of the, the 2021 graduating class, right? And these young minds are eager and hungry to hit the world. What are the top three career opportunities for creatives, content creators, and di digital media specialists right now? So right now, I'd say that would be brand partnerships, um, connecting with brands that align with your voice, your message, and just making money off of selling, you know, to your audience through them, just putting your audience onto their products, what it is that they do. And I have several brand partnerships now that I am a part of, and that's one way to make money. Another way is just doing social media management. You know, you can take your creativity and use that for a company. You know, they may not be so savvy on the internet, not be so savvy on Instagram or Facebook, but you can become their social media manager. Mm -hmm. Another way is through affiliate partnerships. I know we spoke about this the last time, but most of those kind of work um, abroad. Uh, but you still have access to them as Bahamians as well. I know Google has one. Um, Amazon has one. There are some other ones related to the fashion and beauty industry. But affiliate partnerships are really affordable right now. Um, well, really, really beneficial right now, I'd say, to influencers. And for me, one of the areas that I am now tapping into to uh, make money from being a content creator is to just creating workshops. I kind of want to see myself as a coach or a teacher in the space. And so I have been tapping into just um, creating workshops and online courses. And if you're good at something, you know, why not teach it? Why not make money from it? And so that's that's the wavelength that I am on now. And I think it's 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 a growing one in the field. Yeah, that, that's powerful, Anthony. I I also want to mention uh, companies that don't necessarily understand the depth and the label that goes into social media management and content creation and curation. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so it's important to mention to companies that social media management within itself is a department on its own. It is very difficult to manage on its own. All, all these different social media pages, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and then have to also manage projects and, and so many other things. It's important for companies to compartmentalize these positions uh, so that you're not uh, tiring out or overworking uh, content creators and social media managers. It, it takes more than just um, uh, one person that does social media, that does your marketing, that writes your public statements, yeah. that writes all these things. It's a very team. difficult to do that. It takes a team for that kind of thing. Listen, it is not until you actually do social media management that you realize, oh, you're not just sitting here posting on Facebook or scrolling on Instagram. Like, it is legit work exactly. from conceptualizing what the content is going to be, going out there and actually shooting it, whether it's video, mm -hmm. whether it's photo, whether it's a podcast, and then coming back and having to edit, and mm -hmm. then coming back and having to write the captions, then coming back and having to schedule it and post mm -hmm. it out. It is an action. Yeah, people actually have social media departments at their mm -hmm. companies. It's not just a one-man job at all. And it is a lot of work. And I'm so happy that you shed light on that because I think people kind of downplay it and not give it the respect that it deserves. But it is a real job. In fact, it's Definitely. real jobs. Uh. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say to young people, this is, this is the yep. future. 
create media specialist firms, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and understand that this is a sm we have a small population. Right. And so I can suggest, like, let's try to build one big firm mm -hmm. and get lots of young people in on it. And your yeah. first client can be the government because God knows they need your help <laughs> badly. Desperately. Desperately. Xavier right. can't do it all itself, right? Right. <laughs> so. and, I, and I'm not sure if they have the hiring capacity, right? Like if the, the policies are in place to understand why you would need to hire in this way, right? Exactly. The way these exactly. things are set up. Mm -hmm. um, and our young people need it because they, we have to make a space for them. Mm -hmm. Us old heads have to understand that we have to, to shift our comfort levels and allow the environment to accommodate more than just ourselves. Right, right. right? And, and this is what young people them into. And, mm -hmm. and on that note, BPL and BTC and other, because uh, y'all is government affiliated, y'all other service providers, none of this is, a, like we just, this is all, what they call pipe dreams, remember right. our drug culture? Mm -hmm. This is all just smoke in the air unless we can guarantee reliable services from you guys mm -hmm. as well. That's what's driving these young people crazy. I got a text here quickly, hey Aaron, let's expand your idea. What about an app once launched will play a video when, you're, when you are in that or other spaces? What a... A QR code, once scanned, will launch the mm. same, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And what I thought about is, I saw this uh, advertisement for a phone. So Darwin, you and I are traveling, and yes. you are ahead of me, right? right? You start off in the morning, I can meet you in the afternoon. Yeah. And you leave a tag on certain buildings. And with the app on my phone, when I put my phone on the building, it's like invisible ink, mm -hmm. and I could see your tag. Like, what a wonderful scavenger hunt, walking tour, new type of tourist engagement idea that could be, hey? Right, yeah, yeah. No, that's a, that's excellent. And hotels are already implementing this with their menus, with their daily activities. Right, right. Yeah. Man, Ayanthea, you still there? Hi. Hi. Yep, still there. So we're going to have to bring you on again so we could continue this discussion. <laughs> Not because we ran out of time, but because this is a continuing discussion. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about here. There's a lot to unpack when you come to talk about social media and social media management and content creation. I agree. Yeah, and not just um, not just having a conversation geared at young people, but also a conversation to make older Bahamians and less tech savvy people more comfortable with these opportunities as they arise. But I, Auntie, I gotta go. Yeah, they need to be. Yeah, this is my closing out music, and I didn't get to talk bad about Halston Mutri again. I didn't mean talk bad. What I meant was offer the critique that is needed in times like these. Sir, we are going to need you to take your job more seriously. Even if you don't quit and you only gonna have it for a couple more months, we still need you to take it seriously. Just like we're gonna take this weekend seriously, we're gonna love ourselves, we're gonna drink responsibly, we're gonna drive carefully, we're gonna be good Bahamians and love each other. Have a great weekend, Bahamas, and stay tuned for Levan Miller. Up next. On